Welcome for Audio Sorcerers, Wizards, and Gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I'm the Audio Sorcerer. In today's video, we're going to talk about a new plugin, uh, also a free plugin, which makes it that much better, called the Sonable Balancer. Now, what this plugin does is it looks at the frequency spectrum of a specific track, and it tries to find the deficiencies in it, and it automatically fixes them for you. So it's basically an automatic EQ, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, but before we get into this tutorial, I do want to mention that I offer mixing services and mastering services. And you can click that link above that's popping up right now uh, to visit my website, and you can see the rates for it. Uh, and also, uh, make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet. And hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, let's get to the video. All right, so I am on the Sonable website here, and I'm on the balancer section of the website. And this is a little write-up on what this plugin actually does. And they describe it as less time engineering, more time creating. And it's automatic corrections within seconds. Balancer was developed by Focusrite and Sonable. While listening to any audio material for a couple of seconds, the plugin gathers detailed information crucial for the mixing task at hand. By combining and interpreting this information using AI technology, deficiencies in a signal, e.g. regarding the spectral balance, are detected and automatically corrected. Okay, so this is similar to uh, Isotope's Neutron, except that it only does EQ. It doesn't do anything like compression or add any saturation or anything like that. It's just looking at the uh, signal from a spectral analysis standpoint, and it's fixing deficiencies within it. And continuing on, it says profiles add even more flexibility to the system by optimizing the algorithm for different source signals. By telling the smart engine what kind of instrument or voice it's handling, choosing a suitable profile ensures a perfect adaptation of the analysis to the respective input signal. So that's basically saying that you can go in there and actually select what type of instrument that is listening to, like a kick drum, a snare drum, a guitar, etc. So let's actually get into Pro Tools and take a look at this plugin and listen to what it does. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools. And the uh, session I'm going to be using for this example is pretty simplistic. It only has a uh, kick, snare, and a couple pads in it. Um, but I think it'll give a good representation of what this plugin can do. So why don't we take a listen to a song so you can get a feel for it, and then uh, we'll start adding in the balancer plugins and then see what they can do. So here we go. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have in the song so far. It's just pretty much an eight bar loop of that uh, over and over again. So uh, eventually it'll have lyrics to it. Uh, but uh, moving on from that. Uh, so I think we'll start with the kick drum here. So let's actually solo that and give a little listen to what it sounds like. Okay, so that's not too bad of a sounding kick drum there. You could probably use a little bit more beater in it. So let's actually see what this plugin can do. So I'm going to add it here, and it's going to show up under the EQ section, and it's going to be called Balancer. Now it may look a little different in other DAWs, but that's what it looks like in Pro Tools. So let's wait for it to load here. All right, so this is what the Balancer plugin looks like. Um, so the learn button here is which you would enable when you're playing back the track so it can gather information about the uh, spectrum of the track. And uh, this is where you choose what type of instrument you're working with here. So you can see that you have uh, several different things in here. It covers most stuff. Um, if you were doing something like pads, you might just choose keys for that. So that's kind of like a, I guess you could say a workaround. Or you could just leave it on universal. Um, that tends to work pretty well in my short time playing with this plugin. Uh, the intensity is how much of this effect is being applied to the track. Um, you can almost look at it as a mix knob, basically. And then down here you have your um, different types, warm, neutral, and bright. Warm is going to add a little bit more of those low mids in. Neutral is going to be a balance between warm and bright. And then bright is obviously going to bring in a lot of more of the high frequencies on there, a lot of more air into it. So um, let's actually play the kick track and then see what this thing does. So 
So as you can see, it added in definitely a little bit more of that beater sound that I was looking for automatically there, uh, right on neutral. So let's uh, go between warm and bright also and see what that does to the kick drum. Let's start with warm. All right, going through those three there, I feel like warm is nice, but it doesn't quite have enough of that high like mids that I want for that beater sound as that neutral does. And bright is missing a little bit too much to low end for me. So for kick here, I'm gonna leave this on neutral and let's listen to it in the track to see what it sounds like. All right, so I actually really like what that did to the kick there. That uh, got me what I was missing in it. Um, it did a really nice job of blending in that that really nice little low part of this kick because this is more kind of a modern pop song. We need to have that tight kind of low end with it. And then it also is giving me enough of that beater that's going to stand out if you're listening per se on laptop speakers when most of your low end disappears. So um, I really like what it did. So uh, let's move on to the snare drum. So let's listen to the snare drum and solo first so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. Okay, so I actually really like the way the snare drum sounds as is, um, so I'm kind of curious to see what the bouncer is going to do to it. So right now I just have a little bit of reverb on it here, and this is just uh, a gain knob here turning down the initial gain a bit, so there is really no processing on it. So let's add in balancer. Okay, so let's learn the track now. Okay, so I'm not sure I like what that did in the neutral position there. Um, it kind of made it sound a little clunky when I was going back and forth between the two. So let's actually listen to all three of these in solo before we add it into the track. We'll start with warm. Okay, so that's the difference between the three different options on there. I'm not sure that I'm liking any of them solo at the moment, so let's actually hear what they sound like within the track and see if I like any of these compared to the original. All right, so I think between the three of those, I do actually like neutral the best. Um, I am curious to see what it sounds like um, back to how it was originally without using this plugin. So let's see if we can go back and forth between it. And I think this plugin actually made the stare maybe a little bit louder, so I don't know how accurate of a representation we're gonna get, but uh, let's listen anyway. So this is with it on first.
All right, so I actually really like that on neutral. Now actually hearing it in the mix as opposed to hearing it solo, I think it does add quite a bit more compared to uh, what it sounded like before this plugin was on. And what I'm hearing it in is actually more in those low mids, which we would hear in the warm side, but this has, remember, a blend between the warm and bright. So we still have that nice top end, but we also still have that nice bit of low mids on the snare, which give it that, you know, oomph. Um, you know, anywhere, I would say the snare drum is, you know, pretty prevalent in the 120 range up to maybe like 250. You can get a really nice low end there on it to give it that um, smack, I guess you could say. So um, let's actually move on to the pads now. All right, so let's listen to this first pad here in solo. Okay, so it's a pretty basic uh, sweeping pad here that's just supposed to lay uh, underneath the vocal when we get those in there. So let's uh, add the balancer to that and see what it does. All right, so to be honest, for this particular sound, I actually like the warm sound for it. Um, it's adding a very nice low end to this pad, because again, this is gonna sit underneath the voice and everything, and, and there may or may not be a bass guitar in here, so this may be the low end. So let's hear what this sounds like in the mix. All right, so I think so far everything's sounding pretty great. Um, we have one more pad that I want to apply this to, and then we'll see what we got as a finished product. So this is the second pad here. Let's listen to this in solo. Okay, so this pad is supposed to lie underneath the other pad to some extent. Uh, together, they're gonna create that nice low end that we're gonna have, because again, there may not be any uh, bass in this song. So, but again, we'll see what happens as it uh, starts to form. So let's add in the balancer plug into this. All right, so let's learn this one. So I actually like all three of these for this particular sound, but it depends on how I want to use this sound on which one I'm going to choose. And I'm thinking the neutral is going to be the best because it does still have a lot of low end in it, but it has that sizzle that I want. And that sizzle is going to be blended in very lightly with the other pad to create the sound I'm looking for. So let's put this on neutral and let's listen to the song as a whole.
All right, so that's what that sounds like, and I, I think that sounds really good. I don't really have any complaints with what this plugin is doing. So I think the last thing that I want to do is listen to this before we applied the plugins to all the tracks, and then we will listen to it again with all the plugins active on the tracks so we can make a comparison. All right, so you can hear a pretty good difference between those three playbacks that I did. Now, the last one was kind of a bonus slash surprise because I didn't actually show you in the tutorial on how to specify uh, a specific instrument for the balancer to analyze. So what I did was for the kick, I went in and I did kick. And then for the snare, I went in and did snare. And I actually have to say, I do like it better using those instruments under their specific type as opposed to Universal. Now Universal created a very nice sound, but I think the kick and snare specifics took it a little bit further. Now for the pads, I did leave the plugin on Universal because again, as mentioned earlier in the tutorial, we don't have a specific setting in here for pads. I would probably use the keys, but uh, I did mess with that a bit and I actually like the Universal setting much better. So again, I mean, you're gonna have to play with this and figure out what you like, but I liked most of my options just going between, you know, the three, you know, warm, neutral, and bright on universal and the specific type. So you're gonna get a good sound on this plugin no matter what. So uh, make sure you guys stick around for my final thoughts on the Sonable Balancer. All right, so my final thoughts on this plugin are, it's, uh, it's very good. Um, it did fantastic work throughout this tutorial on the tracks that I had in the session. Um, it's great for beginners who don't know a lot about EQing because it's going to get you somewhere in the right place right off the bat without having a whole lot of knowledge. Um, so I guess you could say it's somewhat dangerous to us uh, more advanced and seasoned engineers. But uh, honestly, it also helps me out too because it, it looks at stuff that maybe I was missing and it fixes it for me. So um, yeah, this video definitely gets the audio sourcer's stamp of approval. So I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, make sure you give a thumbs up. And please subscribe so I can continue making this content for you. I hope you guys like it. And hit that notification bell, showing up again up here, uh, to know when I have new videos coming out. So uh, I will see you guys later, and uh, peace out.